Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I'm very excited to bring you a nice early look, as we predicted, at the new Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Golden Disc Collection, Pterosaur. Now, Pterosaur is probably the most hype-generating release in this collection because the guy hasn't had an update of his original, you know, Season 1 Beast Wars form ever, like, since the original toy. He's had a Transmetal toy that's been, you know, re-released here and there a couple times in, like, different colors. And then he did get a BotCon figure, which was, like, a pre-Beast Wars form. But as far as just your regular Pteranodon-based Season 1 Predacon, it's been very high and dry for him. So we're finally getting a nice Pterosaur update. With that said, if you've seen my reviews before, you know this goes. We're going to take a look at Pterosaur's packaging. Then we'll open it up, we'll check out the instructions, and then we'll see Pterosaur himself in both Beast and Robot modes. Naturally, I'll be doing plenty of group shots and comparisons today. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Pterosaur comes with the fourth and final piece of the special packaging that's meant to combine with the others to form the picture of the golden disc. You can see all your Transformers branding here, the Warp Cybertron Kingdom brand, and Golden Disc Collection Pterosaur. Then you also get one quarter of the Golden Disc, which does wrap around a bit on the bottom and side here. Up top, nothing special, just more writing. Wrap around in the picture. And then on the back, this is the part where I actually get to see the toy. We get Renders a Pterosaur in both his Beast and Robot modes. He takes 22 steps to transform. And though they don't show it here in the renders, he does come with a golden disc. And it's actually one of the two that came with the Titan class arc figure. Oddly enough, it's the wrong golden disc. It's the one that was in the possession of the Vok and not the one that was, you know, stolen leading to the events of the Beast Wars. So big oversight on their part. They didn't get the golden disc right, but oh well. Honestly, if you bought this for the disc, you're probably buying it for the wrong reasons. You can see we got our usual like cave painting artwork here for the background. You get a Predacon symbol, and then no Pteranodon symbol or anything, just three like scratches, so just like uh, Tigertron's there before him. Now the backstory behind this whole Golden Disc collection is a little weird, very, very out there, and basically leads to this kind of crazy time traveling hijink thing, which ends up kind of canceling itself out in the end and just leading to the normal events of Beast Wars. So consider it kind of like a micro continuity that canceled itself from existence and there's some ideas about it that i think are pretty cool some i think are not great like the whole puffer being just huffer and pipes like fused together rather than a new character and I've harped on that a few times um i think probably the weakest one as far as you know justifying their inclusion in this is pterosaur's whole thing where falling into the lava during the quantum surge didn't kill him in this universe, but instead infused him with lava powers where he like breathes fire and stuff. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but there's nothing about this toy that synergizes with that at all. There's no like fire blast effect that comes out of his Pteranodon mouth or mounts on his gun, which honestly I would have preferred getting something like that over the golden disc because you can get the golden disc elsewhere. So if they were going to play this whole superpower thing, why not include something like that? Because really, you can just completely ignore this backstory and just have a pterosaur toy. Um, so yeah, he gets superpowers, but they just kind of mention he has them. He never seems to use them. Uh, plots to use the fact that he's like the only guy left in his timeline to go back in time and overthrow Megatron. Now, typical pterosaur stuff. Takes advantage of a confused, mutated Tigatron to help him. They clash with Autobots, Tigatron touches the Golden Disc and kind of regains himself, very much in the same way how Dinobot 2, you know, when his spark became whole after Rampage's destruction, ended up kind of remembering who he used to be. And then Tigatron and the Autobots team up to stop Pterosaur. They undo the changes to the timeline, which leads to him just perishing in a pool of lava like he normally does. Personally, I think this would have been a good way to have them do something interesting like justify the existence of a transmetal Pterosaur, but oh well. We might see that in the comics, though. Because we've been following the IDW comics, and I think it's safe to spoil it at this point. Uh, Pterosaur has died already, like, much earlier than he does in the normal Beast Wars continuity. And it's hinted that Tarantulas is going to rebuild him into something. Maybe he's going to rebuild him in his transmetal form. I'm not sure how that'll work, but it could happen. It's either that or some new original idea. Okay, so, backstory out of the way. I don't think you guys are here for that. Let's go ahead and... See how this thing looks paired up with the other three boxes. 
And here it is, the completed golden disc picture. Now I've already mentioned, I don't think this is the most exciting packaging gimmick that Amazon has done. I think the sets they did for the Prime Wars trilogy and the earlier War for Cybertron stuff was a lot cooler, but it's better than nothing. It gives you a reason to collect them all if you really, really need a picture of the golden disc. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't line up perfectly. You can see that not everything's really exactly where it should be, unfortunately, which is going to happen. I mean, you know, just real world, the way these boxes print and fold, it's never going to line up 100%. But if you're a completionist, this gives you, I guess, something for your effort. All right, here we have Pterosaur's instructions. You can see his name, the logos, the nice render of him right here on the front open it up and they show you how to kind of put your pterosaur together from the packaging shows him you know how he comes and then he's got these little forearm spike things that are a you know tv show detail now something to be wary of these spikes they come wrapped up in like a little bit of white tissue paper on the back of his cardboard flat and it might be easy to miss so make sure you don't throw those away when you open it look on the back it's just a little roll, maybe about, I don't know, about that big or so of white tissue paper, and these are rolled up in there. So don't toss those. <clears throat> and this has you go ahead and like straighten his wings and his, you know, head out. This is how you attach those spikes in his beast mode, just to get them kind of hanging out on the other side. And honestly, they, they tuck away pretty well. They're not that noticeable. Then this shows you potential weapon storage for his blaster. You can either store on his hip or underneath his wing here. And then they show you how to open and close his mouth. The next bit actually goes to the transformation. So we start out in his beast mode. Goes all the way around to a very show accurate looking robot mode. And then this panel shows you where else you can store his weapon. You can either hold it or like his beast mode, store on his hip or his wing. Though it goes on the wing a little bit differently in this mode. So they pretty much covered all the bases. They don't actually show off the golden disc in these instructions at all. There's no render of them. I think they really were an afterthought. My theory is that Pterosaur was designed for Mainline Kingdom, and they just, you know, through reshuffling, kind of ran out of space in the waves and decided to put in this collection and then just, like, threw the golden disc in for good measure. Honestly, he's more than enough for, you know, full deluxe price without it, so it's just a little freebie, I guess. Now we can see Pterosaur's beast mode along with his golden disc. And we're gonna go ahead and just take a look at this now, kind of get out of the way because it's rather inconsequential. But you can see it's got that, you know, record, like analog record inspired sculpt on the front, says the sounds of earth. And then on the back, you get your weird Vox symbols. And for comparison, here is the one that came with the arc. And I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but this one is painted uh, somewhat darker and a little, less shiny, you know, shade of paint than the one that came with the Ark. It's a little more worn looking here. But you can see they are the same sculpt and everything, so... That's, you know... If you already have the Ark, this is probably going to feel like a real letdown. If you didn't buy it because you just didn't want it or didn't want to justify the price, I guess this is one way to get a golden disc. Though again, I really would have preferred, you know, something else, a fire blast effect or something. Alright, now to look at the beast mode. This toy is a very, very extensive retool of the Kingdom Air Razor toy. And, I mean, when I say very extensive, I mean over half the toy is new parts. Uh, it's almost, I'd say it's more of a partial, really, than a retool. It's just kind of reusing some parts. Um, and we'll get a better look at that in the robot mode, where everything's kind of unfolded, so I could point out, you know, what's what. But, yeah, a lot of this is different. I just dropped his gun. All right, there's the forearm spikes that plug in right there. Here's his blaster which, as we saw, can either plug in here on his hip via this little notch right here. So you just kind of stick it in there. Kind of a tight fit, but it will go. So you can do that. I don't like using that, though, because how tight the fit is and the fact that this is painted might scrape the paint off. Plus, it sticks out more. You could also store it on his gun. And that fits in a little bit better, and it's a little more out of the way. The beast mode, it works great. The head's very articulated. It pivots up and down and rotates a full 360. The mouth can open and close just fine. It's got nice painted details for the beak and the teeth. And then the inside of the mouth, it's left red, but that works for him because the inside of his mouth should look red. Got those menacing green eyes. Got that nice uh, head crest there. The back's got some nice painted details, little black spots here. 
got a little tail. The wings are all new pieces. They're articulated very similarly to Air Razors, but it's all new molding. Um, the legs are mostly the same, like from here down. New feet, of course, more dinosaur-like appearance, though he is a reptile, technically. Um, and then you see something here that's a bit disappointing. This is his fake chest kibble for the robot mode, which is designed to look like the Beast Mode's tail. So I will say that what we get is phenomenal. It really is. It is a wonderful, wonderful rendition of Pterosaur's like show-based beast mode put into plastic. However, this wouldn't be an honest review if I didn't kind of share some gripes I have with this. First of all, just the fact that it is a retool of Air Razor, though a very impressive one, is kind of a problem. Pterosaur is a rather big character in the TV show. Like his old toy may have been small, it was basic size, but you know, the show didn't really stick to the toy scale when designing the CGI characters. Pterosaur should be somewhere in the ballpark of like Dinobot's height. So he's a rather big character and you would expect it to, right? Cause I mean, his beast mode is rather large. Um, this toy being Air Razor's height and being a deluxe is gonna look pretty small next to like his boss Megatron. So it's a shame, <laughs> it's a shame, but you know, that's, that's something that's had a lot of debate. Some people are disappointed. Some people are like, hey, just be grateful you're getting him at all. I am grateful we're getting him. And like, I will say the retooling effort is substantial and I do applaud them for that. But it is disappointing, especially when somebody like Tigertron, who is really just a recolor Cheetor, gets his own mold as a larger figure. So, you know, budgets really, really hit the Beast Wars characters harder than like their G1 counterparts, especially when it came to scale. The G1 based characters for War for Cybertron have been pretty, pretty good when it comes to scaling them. They may not all be like the exact perfect height difference from each other, but they're all in that neighborhood, you know, like Optimus is big, Ultra Magnus is a little bigger, Jetfire's huge, you know. It works, even if it doesn't line up exactly to the animation models. The Beast Wars characters, they're all over the place when it comes to scale. So. You know, that's my first big disappointment here. It's just what he isn't. The other thing, as I mentioned, there's the fake chest kibble here. Now, if you know me, you know I generally don't like the fake kibble thing. Sometimes it's necessary, right? Imagine Cyclonus in a toy made in the 21st century where his head is really the cockpit of the ship and he's just got this giant goofy looking head. Sometimes, you know, to make a character look decent, you do need to rely on some fake kibble and some transformation cheats. However, there seems to be this ever-growing desire from the design team to make everything so show accurate with proportions that they just use fake kibble even when it's not necessary. Good example would be, say, the studio series Hot Rod, who goes through all sorts of twists and turns to justify giving him a smaller chest rather than just using the hood of the car. Um, or even more egregious, the new core class hot rod, which is yikes. I mean, most of the car mode just folds up on the back of his legs but to give him a fake chest. Like, I, I don't get it. I don't get why they will compromise either the stability of the toy or the look of the toy to achieve that. Because a lot of the time, as is the case with Pterosaur here, the fake kibble and then the real kibble are visible at the same time. Like, it's not even hidden away, so. It's really becoming a problem for me where I don't know why they rely so heavily on this. And I'm sure some people are saying, well, what do you expect them to do? What do you want them to do? Well, if you're familiar with the original Pterosaur toy, it was one of those basic class spring-loaded, like quick changing toys. He was basically an inverse of the other basic toys that had come out before him, especially toys the likes of say, your bad Optimus Primal or your old school Air Razor where when he did his little flip thing, instead of the head becoming the chest for the robot, the tail end did, and the head folded back. They could have done that here, and I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna demonstrate right here. So, here's your pterosaur, right? Let's kind of remove this just to keep it from popping off. All right, so let's bend this a little more. Pose them right, spin these around. Okay, so you get something that looks like this. Now, because this is all retooled anyway, it's all new pieces, all this like backpack stuff, all new pieces. There's no reason that they couldn't have effectively turned all this around 
where you know the head is here, the tail is there, and then instead of engineering like this new chest area with kibble, this would be open like air razors, and then the tail end would just flip down over the chest. And it would work just like the original toy. And I see, I mean, somebody tell me if I'm wrong, but I see no reason why it wouldn't work. It seems a little back heavy right now, but that's because, you know, all the weight's here. Um, once you flipped everything around, more of the weight would be here. So, I mean, it would look really good. You'd have the head facing this way. And then in the robot mode, his wings would point upward. And while having wings at all makes him not show accurate, because in the show, his wings just magically disappear when he transforms, they would at least be accurate to the old toy where the wings pointed up because of his transformation, which would have really worked well into the upcoming toy colors repaint or retool, whatever you want to call it, uh, that was leaked from the Buzzworthy line. I don't know why they didn't do this. Like, did it did it never cross their minds? Did they ever think about it? Would it have really made that big of a difference in the budget if they just engineered this basically backwards from itself? I don't know. I mean, again, I'm not a toy designer, so normally I wouldn't like to say, oh, I could have done it better than the professional toy designers, but in this case, I, I kind of feel like I could have. <laughs> like, why couldn't they have done that? Just turn it all around. It would have worked great. Again, if I'm way out of line here and you see a very obvious reason why this wouldn't work, please let me know, but I, I don't know why this wouldn't work to just turn the beast mode around like that. All right, now that I've kind of aired my grievances with the toy, Let's take a look at how he compares to your Air Razor figure. And you can see, you know, when you look at the underside, it's kind of obvious that it retools, but everything from like here up, I mean, it's mostly different pieces, so they end up looking quite unique from each other. And they have very, very different profiles. I mean, look at this. The wings are different, the heads are very, very different, the tail areas. Uh, they do a good job setting him apart from Air Razor, both in terms of tooling and color placement. It helps that he has painted details removed in some places and in others to help just kind of break everything up. So yeah, I'd say as a retool, he works very, very well. And if we do have to settle for a deluxe glass pterosaur, I think this is the best mold they could have used for that. Now here's a fun little evolution shot of pterosaur's alt modes over the years. On the left is his actual vehicle mode from the 2016 BotCon set the Rise of Predicus, or sorry, Dawn of the Predicus, and it's just kind of a concept of, you know, what Pterosaur would look like before he had a beast mode. Interestingly, they put a lot of his beast details onto the jet mode, which does make it more recognizable as Pterosaur, also doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> Let's see, that's some kind of foresight that one day he would turn into this big red flying lizard. And then on the right, we have Pterosaur's Transmetals toy from all the way back in Beast Wars. And this is one of my favorite Transmetal figures. I think it's absolutely stellar. And honestly, if they ever did a modern take on this design, I don't know what they could actually fix aside from maybe just replacing most of the ball joints with like universal joints, just so it holds up better. I mean, it's already a great, great design. So yeah, we never saw him turn into this in the show. I think he was planned to at some point. They just decided to drop him to keep the cast smaller since they were introducing new characters. Which is a shame, because I would have loved to see him and Scorponok actually take on their transmetal forms, but sadly, they just died in lava instead. Because, honestly, you'll see when I do the robot boats, this is a cool, cool design. Okay, now it's time for the transformation. Now, I covered Air Razor's transformation in her own video, but I feel that there's enough changed here, enough, you know, retooled and kind of reshuffled that I think he warrants his own. So the first thing you want to do is if you have his gun attached, just go ahead and remove that. The forearm spikes don't actually have to be detached for transformation, unlike with Air Razor. They just stay right where they're at, and they pretty much stay out of the way, so you don't have to worry about them. So, you wanna bring the legs down, just like you do for Air Razor. This part's very similar. Just kinda straighten them out here, get them off these tabs, turn them around at the knee, straighten out the shins, then turn the feet around, like so. And you pop the tail section up, spin him around at the waist, a whole lot of twisting and turning here. You go ahead and pull his arms out, unfold the fists, turn them in a more natural position. All right, and now the beast head, you actually want to turn it around, pull this back, and you're going to flip his head out. 
So it's a bit different, right? This has all been reworked instead of having, like, one piece where, like, the head and the kibble rotates. This kibble is just stationary. So they redid all that. All right, then you're going to use this double hinge here. See, it's in gray. To work this back, just like on Air Razor, until you collapse this torso into a more natural position. Close this little back panel up. And then you just fold this head down. Now the instructions don't seem to compensate for you know the lack of clearance here because they have this head bending down much further to the point where like you keep the neck straight and the kibble is like really well hidden. But you can see it really does not go down that far. There's no way to make it to. So you are gonna have the crest of it kind of sticking up as a backpack a little bit, which not too bad, but I don't know. They seem to have dropped the ball with that. All right, and then his wings are gonna fold up just like air razors. So you get these little tabs to plug into the back to hold everything kind of stationary. And you fold this hinge in, and then tuck the outer wings kind of away and make them like a cape. Now, of course, you can just have them splayed out to make it look like he's actually flying if you want to do that. All right, this is, I think, a pretty good compromise between the show model, which had no back wings, and then the original toy, which had pretty prominent ones. You get ones that can just at least kind of be neatly tucked away there and look more like a cape than anything. All right, so check that out. Does that not look awesome? That looks awesome. And then, of course, you have his blaster. Now, you can plug it onto his wings, just like, you know, with the beast mode. You can also put it on his hip here, which, even though you still have the same issue with, like, paint rubbing and all that, I think it looks a lot cooler having it holstered on his hip. But, of course, for me, I want to have him actually wield it. So you plug it into his fist, and it's actually a really tight fit for his fist. So just be aware of that. You could potentially see some stress marks on the inside of his hands there. Um, oh, his foot got spun around. All right, so here we go. Robot mode, weapon in hand, looking absolutely phenomenal. Like, easily the best pterosaur toy we've ever had. And I do like how it does, you know, blend his CGI model as well as his original toy design. Now, they do have that upcoming, you know, Toy Colors one, which I'm assuming, based on, you know, the other Toy Color recolors and all that, that it'll probably have a different head, one that's a little more rounded and more based on the original toy. At least I hope so. Hope they retool the new head in there. And then, you know, he'll have, like, the red and purple coloration of the old toy. Um, maybe? That's what I would assume they're gonna do. I could also see them just justifying just leaving his head as is and painting a purple because it's not as radically different in design as like some of the other characters. But personally, I would love that more like bucket helmet look if they are going to go that route. We'll see what they do. We also know there's supposed to be a fractal coming and I guess the latest update is they're not quite sure where it's gonna go. It's gonna be an exclusive somewhere but they haven't figured it out yet. But, you know, Fractal would be kind of a no-brainer from this. Now, beyond that, there are some other options that they could do. I don't know if they will reach that deep. But you do also have Beast Wars Laserbeak. You also have Beast Wars Hydra, who's almost identical to Laserbeak, so it could be, like, one or the other. Probably not both, because they're so similar. You also have, like, that Dinobot Subline Swoop, which was just, like, a G1 Swoop color version of, you know, the old Pterosaur toy. And then if they get really obscure, they could even do that, like, blue and black pterosaur that was supposed to be stray from the uh, Age of Extinction movie. That one, I think, is a little too out there. I think we would only see that if they took that color scheme and just made it a different character. Because, let's be honest, that was just, like, some quick little cash grab exclusive from Walmart when Age of Extinction came out. So, I wouldn't really want that being some weird movie verse, you know, version of this guy, but we'll see. All right, so checking out his tolerances, everything feels good. The head's nice and tight, the shoulders are good. I've heard some people say that they're having issues with one of the wings popping off, and then apparently the feet are really loose on their copy. Now, his ball joints on his feet, they are fairly loose, but nothing like particularly bad. They feel about the same as they do on Air Razor and uh, Skywarp there. Um, but yeah, you can see it. He looks good, everything feels nice and tight, poses well, his little like loincloth flap thing does move up too to give him more clearance, though you do see those unsightly mushroom pegs underneath. And I will say that despite the fact that he's much smaller than I would have liked and really cheats the transformation when he didn't have to, he looks amazing. 
and the finished product makes for one of the most impressive retools I've ever seen. Okay, here's our comparison with Air Razor's robot mode, and I've gone and thrown in her other retool, Skywarp, just for good measure, so you can see, you know, all three versions. Now, between Air Razor and Skywarp, the only tooling difference is the robot head. But when it comes to Pterosaur, like I said, most of him is different. And honestly, where do I begin? So the shoulder pieces, like the red upper arm area, all new. The pelvic area, though similar in a lot of details, does have new tooling. The thighs are new. Uh, from the knee down, like knee to the shins is the same, and then new feet to, you know, be more accurate to his robot mode and his beast mode. This whole chest section is a new piece, and, you know, therefore his head assembly is too. And then, like, everything on the back is new tooling. So, I mean, what do, what do they have in common? Mold-wise, you got the forearms and hands, and the shins. That's pretty much it. Like, even as far as, like, the inner skeletal pieces, I think they're all different. So he is an incredibly extensive retool. Which does, you know, still beg the question of, well, I mean, if they went this far, <laughs> like, why didn't they either, you know, flip the top half of the beast mode around to get rid of the chest kibble, or just make a Voyager? Now, naturally, a Voyager would be more expensive than a retool, because it'd be an all-new mold, similar to, you know, Cheetor and Tigatron. However, this guy has so much recolor potential, I feel like that new mold would have justified itself just fine. It just, it's something that is, you know, kind of disappointing to me. On a side note, I failed to point this out sooner, he does have a nice little Predacon symbol tampoed right there on the one forearm. It's a small detail, but it is one that's appreciated. He needs some kind of faction symbol on him. In fact, it's actually just in the same place that Air Razor has hers. I don't know if that's intentional or not. Okay, here are the other versions of Pterosaur again. His pre-Beast Wars form from Dawn of the Predacus, and his Transmetal form. I do want to point out that this pterosaur from that 2016 BotCon, probably one of the best looking pieces that came out of that. I think he worked a lot better than a lot of the other like Beast Wars characters that were just kind of like shoehorned into Combiner Wars molds. His just suits him a lot better than say Tarantulas turning into like an armored vehicle, you know? Plus his head sculpt is really on point and better than a lot of the other fun pub head sculpts out there. So I think he makes for a very nice pre-season one take on the character and really goes with this guy quite well. He is actually slightly taller than this one, but that's not surprising given the you know general downscaling that happened between Prime Wars and War for Cybertron. Uh, so I think they go really well together. And then of course the Transmetal ones just got to be completely different in every way, which was actually pretty normal for Transmetal toys. A lot of them did not look much like their, you know, original like season one version. Just look at Optimus Primal and how much he changed between, you know, Season 1 and Season 2. Doesn't even look like the same character. And that carries over here, too. He does have that signature, like, crest on the forehead, but it's very different, more organic-looking, and he's got this very monstrous face, and then the colors are just completely different. It's all purple and brown and silver, and they have very, very different take. And on the one hand, that doesn't make him very instantly recognizable as Pterosaur, but on the other, it does at least, you know, mix things up a bit so that the Transmetal toy didn't feel too much like the original form. So, yeah, either way, kind of interesting. What's also interesting is that this toy is actually shorter than this one. So it really goes to show that, you know, within a size class, the time period isn't everything. You know, even though War for Cybertron is generally smaller than what came before, you do still get shorter toys like this guy that, you know, show that deluxes aren't always, you know, a certain size based on when they came out. I mean, honestly, Animated Lockdown's a great example. He's taller than a lot of Voyagers nowadays. Now for our last group shot, here's something I've been wanting to do for a couple months now. We get to see our entire Golden Disc collection finally together. So we have our first release, which was Jackpot and his partner Sights, which are, you know, new takes on the old Action Master duo. Then we had our two-pack of Road Ranger and Puffer, Road Ranger being a Gobot character, Puffer being some sort of horrific fusion of Huffer and Pipes. And then we get Mutant Tigatron, who in concept is a recreation of the original Tigatron toys package art, complete with mutant head and orange tiger colors. But in this continuity is apparently some sort of horrific mutant version of Tigatron that's brainwashed by Pterosaur. So 
It's a very odd bunch. And I'm assuming, kind of like the Galactic Odyssey collection, that these toys were just kind of all thrown together, despite being like very thematically inconsistent, just because they were playing and they needed somewhere to go. Now, on the one hand, that makes for, you know, some pretty nonsensical storytelling and a very odd assortment of characters. But on the other hand, they could have just not released these. <laughs> so, I mean, pretty certainly, I, I don't care how we get them as long as we get them, right? I don't care what subline they got thrown into or what justification they have to come up with for, you know, putting them all together. At the end of the day, we still got the toys, which I will say Hasbro's gotten a lot better about that, about, you know, not canceling planned figures. When we look back to, you know, the back catalog, you know, going all the way from Generation 1 to uh, G2 to Beast Wars, Beast Machines, Unicron Trilogy, Animated, all that, so many things left on the cutting room floor. And while that does still happen, I think it happens less often because Hasbro has so many outlets to get these out there now. And we have seen that while some toys may not come out in their intended line, like the case of the Earth Mode Sideswipe being moved from Earthrise to Kingdom, the fact that we do still end up getting them, you know, in relatively short order is a really nice improvement from, you know, how things used to be. So I'm happy with it. These toys really don't make a lot of sense together. They're all very, very different. But Hasbro and Takara, they made it work. They came up with some justification for releasing them all under the same collection. And while it is, you know, annoying that they're exclusives and some people have a hard time getting them, we could just not get them. So sometimes you got to take what you get. And I think what we got here, in the case of all five of these figures across four releases, is pretty stellar. And a lot of them, aside from Pterosaur, are some really deep cuts. And then Pterosaur himself is just, I mean, he's a main character that never really gets a lot of love. So maybe you could call him a deep cut too. And this completes our look at the long-awaited Kingdom Pterosaur. I'm very much of two minds about this toy. Um, anything I dislike about it is basically for everything that it isn't. And perhaps that's unfair, but you know, in all honesty, Pterosaur should have been a Voyager. And then if they, you know, did have to go the route of retooling him from a deluxe, they could have retooled him in a way that just made a lot more sense and didn't, you know, have to rely on so many fake parts. But for what he is, he's honestly phenomenal. Easily the best Pterosaur toy ever made. He looks good. His robot mode is sleek. Even his beast mode looks great. I like his beast mode more than I like Air Razor's beast mode. He's a retool lover. Um, I just think he works very, very well. So again, if you know, you're know you hating on this toy because of what it isn't, I understand that. I really do. Because uh, I think we should have gotten something a little bit better than just a quick retool here for a main character. But yeah, like random side characters, uh, you know, that's one thing. But he's a big player in Beast Wars. He really should have gotten his own toy. Um, but, you know, if you like him for what he is, I also don't blame you. Because he looks really, really good. For what he is, he came out absolutely fantastic. You know, he's got the forearm spikes, which are detachable. And mostly because he's just a retail air razor. But it also kind of works because you can always take those out and actually use his 5 mil ports on his forearms if you want to, like, weaponize them or something. Uh, he has his blaster. And then, even though I personally don't think it's necessary, he does come with a golden disc, which is pretty nice. So, I think overall he's a great, great toy. And even though I do lament the fact that we didn't get a different toy, I can't hate on this too much because they did a fantastic job with what they had. So, do I recommend picking him up? Absolutely. At $20, this guy's a steal. He's very heavily retooled. He is a good size for a deluxe, which does help you know, negate the issue of him being a little too short. He's not super, super short. And he does come with the, you know, bonus golden disc accessory if you need one. So easily, easily recommended. He is an amazing Pterosaur figure, probably the best we're ever gonna get from an official source. So go ahead, if you can find him on Amazon or wherever he sells for in your country, fully recommend him, he's a great toy. Of course, that is just my take on Pterosaur. So now I wanna know what you all think of this toy. Are you eager to get him? And if you did get him, are you happy with what you got? Or are you disappointed, either for the reasons that I mentioned or some other reason? Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. 
If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this look at the new Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Golden Disc Collection, Pterosaur. And with all that said, I will see you next time.